Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video we'll be covering multiplication with fractions and also division with fractions, all right? And the basic idea is we want to get used to seeing whole numbers divided by fractions as well as fractions divided by fractions, mixed numbers divided by fractions, and the multiplication of all three in one set. Besides that, dividing whole numbers with, with fractions and also mixed numbers with whole numbers and fractions on fractions and also the stacked method of fractions. So let's start with the multiplication aspect because division eventually turns to multiplication anyway. So whenever you're dividing, uh, multiplying fractions, we want to first set up every whole number as a dividing fraction. So the 36 becomes a 36 over 1. And this is multiplying by 1 over 2. And what's happening here is we're just multiplying the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So this then becomes just 36 times 1, which is 36. And 1 times 2 is just 2. 36 divided by 2 is just 18. Now before I continue here, I just want to talk about cross-reduction. And when you're doing cross-reduction, what you want to do is take your two fractions that you have side by side and see if one side could reduce the other side. Now the 1 by 1 just simply reduces itself away and now we have this 2 and the 36 which 2 is a factor of itself so it's 1 times 2 gives us 2 and 2 times 18 gives us 36 and this is cross reduction and this simply leaves us with just 18 by 1 over 8, 1 by 1 which is just 18 over 1 which is also 18. Cross reduction is really important when you're working these out because more or less it could cut out all the work that you have to do in just a simple step. Now this next fraction set we have here, we see that work happening. Now, I'm just going to rewrite these so that I could keep the question itself and the work that it consists of separately, right? So here we see the fives reduced to one and one. And the six and the three are also going to reduce because they both have factors of three. So six times, uh, six is three times two. And the three goes away and the two remains and three is three times one which the 1 remains. And now here we're just left with 1 by 1 over 1 by 2, which is 1 over 2, which is the final form of the answer. All right, so when cross-reducing, make sure you, if you see two numbers that are the same across from each other, just get rid of them. And for the others, if they can reduce, like 3 over 6 we know makes 1 half. And that makes it a lot easier for us. Now, a lot of times we may look at mixed numbers by whole numbers and get a little bit scared. In this case, we don't have to worry too much. The best news about working with mixed numbers is they also represent improper fractions, and improper fractions are the best fractions to use when dealing with mixed numbers. So let's change this to an improper fraction. Basically, the 2 multiplies with the 3, and we add the numerator. So 3 by 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, the 7 is over 2, and we're multiplying that by 2 over 1. Taking the same procedure we did with the first example here with 36 over 1, and again, we get the second case here of the cross reduction occurring with the two twos. And these go away and we're just left with seven by one over one by one, which is just seven over one. And our solution, just seven. Now this one has everything in it, so it's gonna take some time to work them out, but we're gonna put this 12 over one and we're gonna change this mixed number into an improper fraction. Two by two is four plus one is five. 5 goes over 2, the denominator never changes when you make a mixed number change into an improper fraction. And here we're multiplying that by 7 over 40, and here we're multiplying that by 12 over 1. Now again, we're still using cross reduction, we want to cross reduce wherever the best cases occur. For instance, I'll probably begin with 40 and 12 because they have a common multiple of 4. So 4 divides 40 and we get 10, 4 divides 12 we get 3. Now there's still something else we can do, which is the 5 and the 10, and we're going to reduce this 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 5 divided by 5 is just 1. Now we'll take whatever we have left over and multiply them. We have 1 half times 7 halves times 3 over 1. We'll just multiply the top straight through. 1 times 7 is 7, times 3, 21. 2 times 2 is 4 times 1 is just 4. And now we have an improper fraction. So we have to change this to a mixed number. So we're going to divide it out. And 4 goes into 21. Uh, 4 goes into 2 0 times. It goes into 21 5 times, which is 20. And the remainder here is going to be 1. 
So we divide that remainder by 4, and here we see that we have 5 quarters. Now 5 and 1 quarter, not 5 quarters. Um, moving on to the division component. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, dividing fractions are very similar to multiplying them. The only difference is um, we'll have to reciprocate the second fraction to change the division to multiplication. So in this first case, we're going to start with the same step we did over here on the multiplying and put the 5 over a 1 and keep the division symbol. The second step, we're actually going to reciprocate the division on the second fraction of the division and change the division symbol to multiplication. So we have 5 over 1 by 3 over 1. And now we just multiply straight across. Same rules as multiplying are applied from here. So we get 15 over 1 and 15 divided by 1 is just 15. Now our second problem, we have a mixed number divided by a whole number. So here we're again going to change the, the mixed number to an improper fraction first and make the whole number a fraction by dividing it by 1. So we have 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5 divided by the same denominator. And here we have the division symbol and we're dividing 3 over 1. Now the second step, we're going to reciprocate the second fraction and change the division to multiplication. Get 5 over 2 times 1 over 3. We're just multiplying straight across now. So we have 5 times 1 is 5, and 2 times 3 is 6. And this is our final answer. There's nothing left to do to this fraction. Now the next step, we have two fractions dividing with each other. This is a really important case. It's the same as what we saw above. Whenever we're dividing two fractions, we're going to reciprocate the second and change the division to multiplication. So right away, we keep the 7 over 10 the same. And we're going to reciprocate the second one and change this to multiplication. So we get 100 over 3. And here we see we can cross reduce. So the 10 and the 100. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 10 di 100 divided by 10 is 10. And we're going to multiply them straight across. 7 by 10 is 70. 1 by 3 is 3. And now we just need to divide this, right? So 3 goes into 70. And 3 goes into 7 twice, that's 6. Subtract this, we get a 1. Bring down the 0, we have a 10. 3 goes into 10 three times. That becomes a 9, and we have a remainder of 1. And we put that over a 3. So our solution for this, 23 and 1 third. Now our final problem here is another set of fractions. And this might not look like something you can get used to, but it's actually something very familiar to this. This is just a classic way to write it. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this division symbol here, right? So we're going to just write the fraction, the first fraction on top, divided by the second fraction on the bottom. So this is very much something that you've already seen today. So now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the same procedures. We're going to take the first fraction, leave it alone, change the sign, reciprocate the second fraction. So we're going to get 1 over 15 multiplied by 9 over 2. And again, we have another case of cross reduction. So the 15 and the 9 reduce. Three di 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And we take these and multiply straight across. 1 by 3 is just 3. And 5 by 2 is just 10. And there you have it, 3 over 10. Thank you.